Hey guys. Hi. You guys were here? Yes. Yeah, I thought it was really good. I liked it too. Um, but there was a lot of confusing stuff going on, especially in the beginning. Like, even from the start, the whole, is there a ghost, is there not a ghost, some people see it, some people don't. I don't know, like, what did you think about that? I don't know. I thought it was also pretty confusing, like, how, uh, the guards, they were, they couldn't, they couldn't, like, fathom that there was a ghost. So, whenever they told Hamlet, like, that there's a ghost, Hamlet was also very, uh, baffled. I mean, I don't know. Why do you guys think Shakespeare put it in? Like, did he make it to interest the audience? Did he make it for, like, characters to seem kind of like they don't know what's going on? Or do you think, like, what's, what was the purpose of it? I believe that Shakespeare puts false appearances in the beginning of the play because he's creating uncertainty among the audience between what is real and what is imaginary. Did you guys see that? What? What are you talking about? I don't see anything. I could have swore there was a ghost in here. I doubt it. There's nothing here. I saw something. Yeah, I don't remember seeing anything. Yeah, man, like, what are you, what are you talking about? Like, I didn't see anything. Okay, okay well, that was weird. That was yeah. weird. Anyway. That was like an awkward. <laughs> okay, well, this reminds me of Act 3, Scene 4, when Hamlet and Gertrude are discussing, and Hamlet says he sees the ghost, but Gertrude doesn't. Yeah, that was kind of weird too because at least in the first time, Horatio saw it with them. But then the second time it happened with Gertrude, no, only Gertrude couldn't see it and only Hamlet saw it. So what is that even supposed to mean? Yeah, I was really confused when I was reading this because it made me bring up a lot of questions. Like for example, is Hamlet really mad? Is the ghost even real at all? Is it imagination? Did it even appear the first time in the first act? And just confused me a lot. Yeah, I was also thinking how like um, if King Hamlet, if he really uh, wanted uh, Gertrude to even see the ghost, uh, because maybe King Hamlet, he solely wanted Hamlet to do like his will. So if he told Gertrude to do whatever, then it probably wouldn't work out because Gertrude is sort of betraying Claudius in a way because Gertrude is in a relationship with Claudius and King Hamlet wants revenge on Claudius, so he probably doesn't want to show Gertrude uh, his ghost being. I agree with that, William. I think Shakespeare's intention was to make us come up with these questions and try to figure out what's going on and kind of make our own conclusion to what's going on in the play. Yeah, I think that's why I liked it more because it kind of gives us as the audience like more freedom to like make up our own story within the story itself with the uncertainty that happens. I agree with that. It generally pulls in the audience and makes it more interesting to read. That's why it's such like a popular book and we're still reading it today because uh, people are like adding on to it and make their own things. Yeah, I agree with what Joel said, um, but aside from the false appearances, the acting within the play was also a big factor and the acting also showed that there was a lot of distrust among the characters and it also affects the audience and it makes them think like is he really doing this is he really acting that way and we can see this in uh, Claudius's uh, morning morning speech for uh, King Hamlet oh yeah Claudius's opening speech in act one scene two was significant because um, he stood before the kingdom and he explained how he was sympathetic and he grieved with everyone, but then we later find out that he was a murderer of his brother. So, which side of him are we supposed to believe? And I think that's the most interesting part. There's distrust between the characters in the play, but there's also distrust between the audience and the actors as well. And so I feel like that adds a lot to the play, just the sense of deceiving and like deceit that continuously plays a role. I believe it brings a whole new, it adds on to the play. It brings on a new feeling of, which it, like what Jessica said, and a feeling of distrust within the play and how it really develops. We really get a, like a, a first glimpse of what Claudius is really like when we find out that he killed Hamlet and it really adds on to his character. 
And we also see how Shakespeare uses acting in Act 3, Scene 2, and that is um, Hamlet's mousetrap play. And in that mousetrap play, Hamlet uses acting as a medium to uh, reveal Claudius that he might be a culprit uh, for King Hamlet's murder. Yeah, I think that Shakespeare is using a play within a play to his advantage so that he can guide the plot and so that Hamlet reaches his main goal in uncovering the truth about Claudius being the murder of his father's death. Yeah, I think Shakespeare is like amazing in the fact that he took that to an advantage. Like he used that to create a more rich, complex, elaborate, intricate, tortuous plot line. Like, don't you think so? So, pretty much every false appearances and acting, they work together because they really bring out the all the uncertainty and it ties everything together within the play. Yes, because uncertainties they can also lead to spying because if one person is uncertain about someone, then they could possibly spy on someone else. And I think acting and false appearances also ties into lying because characters are uncovering their true personalities so they can get away with their schemes and their plans. So false appearances and acting really play into the aspect of lying in the play as well. And it also ties into the relationships that all the characters have with each other, which also leads to deceit and lying and even more uncertainty because the relationships aren't clear like the way they feel about each other or the way that they interact with each other, there's a lot of gray area. What an interesting conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it really was, guys. And then in the, in our new house here, we just had a very heated discussion. And you guys have so much to handle. Yeah. Not me. Good one, Jessica. Good one. Yeah. But. <laughs> Is that water? Is she a ship? <laughs> We're recording. <laughs> yes. That's how the conversation is. Okay, it has to be like fast though. No, 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 no. <laughs> He, Shakespeare did this so we could question what's real and what's fake. Because, I mean, we're pretty uncertain the whole time the whole play. We're kind of just, yep. <laughs> I believe that Shakespeare puts false appearances in the beginning of the play because he wants the audience to, oh gosh. I believe that Shakespeare puts false appearances in the beginning of the play because he's creating uncertainty among the audience between what is real and what is imaginary. Did you guys see that? <laughs> Shakespeare putting in something just as the first time where it makes it seem that the character oh, I can't, I can't, I can't. <laughs> because uh, people are like adding on to it and make their own things I have no idea what to say <laughs> 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 I, 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 I try to look at this. <laughs>